Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another tutorial in 3D Studio Max. This time, I got this skeleton here. And aside from him uh, having not the greatest posture, he's looking a bit strange in our viewport. But if I were to render him out, you'll see that he's got this pretty cool looking x-ray effect applied to him. And all I did to achieve this effect is actually create this pretty simple texture right here. And if used right, this texture can be very useful for you. And that's because you can use it for a lot more than just this x-ray effect that I'm using it for right now. If we scroll over here in my scene, you can see that I have the exact same texture applied to this friendly little ghost guy. And if I take a render of him, you can see he's got the same transparent looking center to him while the edges are brighter and glowing. So as you can see, you can use this texture for a bunch of different types of things, which is limited to only two, your creativity and imagination. That's a load of crap. All right, so let's start by recreating this texture from scratch for you guys. So here we are with a blank slate in our material editor. And the first thing we wanna do is grab a standard material. And we can double click on it to bring up its settings. And I'm just gonna rename it X-Ray or not. There we go. And if I double click on our sphere, it'll expand it so we can see what we're doing with the texture a little better. Now let's just uh, smooth this out of the way for a second and move our ghost. I'm gonna go to our extended primitives and drag out, you guessed it, a torus knot. So I'm just gonna make a torus knot here and jump over to the Modify tab. We're gonna mess with this a bit. I'm gonna change the P to three and the Q to four. And whoa, didn't see that coming now, did ya? That is quite the monstrosity. I'm going to bump up the segments and turn up the sides. And hit, whoa, too many sides, too many sides. Let's stick to something like 18, that's good. We don't need realistic on anymore. It's just gonna slow us down. And we're not stopping. We're on a roll like butter. All right, so we've created our torus knot. Let's apply our x-ray material to our torus knot. And uh, we'll start working on the material to make it a bit more x-ray-like. Now the secret behind this x-ray material is applying a fall off to our opacity map. So I'm gonna go over here to our settings expand our maps section and find the opacity slot. Click on where it says none and select fall off. And when we select fall off, it'll give us a brand new fall off node attached to our opacity slot. And we can actually uh, move this around to anywhere we want. Displacement should look funny, yep. And we can actually uh, add this to multiple slots if we want but we're gonna leave it just on the opacity for right now. So let's double click on our fall off node and mess with some of its settings over here. Now if we scroll down a bit and look in our mix curves section, you'll see that it has this gradient ramp from black to white. And that ramp actually represents the fall off effect that we have right now. Black being completely transparent and white being completely opaque. And everything in between is a percentage of that. So around in here would be, you know, 50% opacity. So we're gonna modify this output by adding a point somewhere on our line here, grabbing our move tool. And we're gonna drag it, if we drag it down the corner like this, you'll see our sphere has changed. If I click show background on it, you might be able to see a little better. Mm. Actually, it's probably easier to see the other way. So as you can see, the center now stays transparent much longer than it did before, which is what we want. We just want to be able to see the edges and the center of our object to be completely see-through, but we don't want it to be such a harsh transition. So I'm going to right click on the point we've made and select Bezier Smooth. And that's gonna give us a more gradual ramp from black to white. Again, black being completely transparent and white being completely opaque. So, now that we have a more gradual fall off created, if we render, our torus knot is really starting to take that effect on. But that's not quite it. You can actually see the skeleton through our torus knot. 
but we're losing a lot of detail. It kind of looks like a jumbled mess in here. So to fix that, we don't want the center to be completely transparent. We want it to have a little bit of texture to it. So we'll go back in our material editor and we're gonna add another node, this time attached to our fall off. And the way we're gonna do that is scroll back up to the top and in our black slot, which is transparency, we're going to add, we're gonna add a noise material. And that of course adds another node, this time connected to our fall off. So we're gonna double click on that and mess with a few settings in here. First of all, I'm gonna turn the size way down, maybe to like 20. And I'm gonna expand our output tab and turn that farther down as well. From one to, let's do point, let's do point one and take a render. Now we can definitely see the inside a lot better, but it still leaves it transparent. Let's uh, tweak that a bit more. Maybe we'll use fractal instead and we'll change it to about 15, the size to about 15, and maybe the output amount to 0 0.05. Just wanna be able to see a little bit, kinda of gives it a smoky feel, sort of like what you'd imagine a ghost to have. So I'm gonna go back in my material editor and I actually think it looked better at 20, so. Great, that's looking good. There's just a few more things I want to tweak. If we go back to our standard material, the standard material actually has some cool, more advanced options that'll help us out with this effect. If we drop down our extended parameters, there's a few options in here that are essentially like blending modes from Photoshop or After Effects or whatever else happens to have blending modes nowadays. So we can either select subtractive or additive. So if we leave this on additive and take a render, you'll see that when we have overlapping parts, it becomes a bit brighter. And as I said before, you can think of this blending mode a lot like After Effects' blending modes or Photoshop's blending modes if you're more familiar with those. They just have a lot more options like hard light, soft light, overlay, color dodge, burn, up, down, left, right, B. They got all sorts of options. But we're gonna leave it on additive for now. That's looking pretty close. The last step I wanna do is, also in our standard material, something that'll really make this effect pop and really give it that x-ray that x-ray feel is turning up our self-illumination so start it at zero we're going to turn it all the way up to 100 percent and render that just really makes things pop it also brightens up our center a little too much so we can always go back into our noise and turn down the output even further to 0 0.02 maybe might be a little too much oh no that's actually pretty good and don't forget, you're not limited to just a black and white render. If you go back into your standard material, you can always change your diffuse color to something, uh, something crazy like red. All right, that about wraps up this tutorial. Be sure to check out the channel page for all the other crazy tutorials we got. We got ones over here, we got ones over there, we got them everywhere. Channel page is actually looking a bit different nowadays, but not to worry, all the videos are still here. So as always, thanks to everybody who watches. Have a nice day.